Uh, I would like to introduce to our next speaker, who is from uh, Symphony Services. His name is Mr. Ajay Baran Gurga. Uh, I'll briefly introduce you to him. Uh, Mr. Abhay Baran Gurga is at present working at Symphony Solution as Solution Architect. He has a master's in computer science uh, with a total of 20 years of um, 20 plus years of experience in IT industry, including the field of embedded systems. Uh, having worked with many Fortune 500 companies, uh, his career experience uh, revolves around build, uh, building mission critical uh, products in life sciences. Uh, also, he has worked on industrial automation and semiconductor uh, equipment domains. His area of work includes end to end development of SCADA products for various applications, including connected health, uh, remote monitoring, data analysis, instrumentation control. He has worked on 100 plus various types of devices and related applications for various industries include life sciences, medical devices, health and wireless, process plant uh, including chemical, steel, automotive and uh, many such relevant areas. Uh, I'm sure we will definitely be uh, getting more insight into healthcare industry. Uh, through Good afternoon everybody. I have a tough job now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, I will be able to make this uh, session more informative and interactive. Uh, so today I am going to share uh, our experiences with the uh, domain called as Connected Health. Uh, so far, I think we have got very good insight about uh, automotive uh, overall embedded systems, uh, the development methodologies, challenges, uh, tools that we have been using. I will be mainly focusing on uh, the application part, uh, not much of the embedded part, uh, but what is connected head. That's my topic today. So, before going into the connected head, let me just give a background uh, about. Uh, what is a connected world? Now today you can see that all the devices that we use today are becoming more and more intelligent. They are getting connected. You are getting very good internet speed. Uh, right now we are talking about 3G. Soon there will be a 4G and uh, lot of you know speed you are getting, lot of bandwidth you are getting. So lot of technologies are evolving. Few of the examples. <coughs> Uh, the recent market trends I would like to share. For example, uh, I am sure that you have heard about uh, the electricity meters. How many of you have heard about smart meters? Okay. So, smart meters, it, it is just beginning in India, but uh, there are already utility companies in US who are installing smart meters. And there are quite a bit of interesting things that you can do with smart meters. One of the things that I like is a two-way metering. So, for example, you have installed a smart meter and uh, you are generally measuring how much energy you are consuming uh, through the grid. The other aspect of smart meter is also that suppose you are generating some energy in your house, let's say through solar or some uh, thing and you are feeding back, back that energy to the grid, it can reverse uh, meter. So, you can basically, you know, safely say that, okay, I am generating some energy, therefore I am uh, getting, you know, earning some money, uh, instead of paying some money, you are basically feeding some energy to the grid. So, that is a quite interesting thing. Second thing is that you are charged based on the demand, okay. So, if let us say there is a peak demand and uh, everybody is needing electric energy, then there is an opportunity though, uh, that uh, wherever you do not need energy, you shut down your equipments at home. So, what they are doing is that they are charging you depending on the uh, you know time of day. So, let us say if there is a business time, then uh, uh, the energy consumption will be a portion according to uh, the uh, you know use and time. So, these are the interesting things that are coming and uh, that is possible only uh, when the energy meters are connected uh, to a utility company uh, through some means like uh, 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 through power line communication or wireless connection and uh, that is possible that is happening today. Another example is that we talked about uh, hybrid vehicles or electric vehicles. Now, if all of the electric vehicles start charging, then there will be a tremendous load into the grid. Okay. So, what is the solution? I mean, how we can solve that problem? So, what is happening is that in the pluggable, there is a concept called as a pluggable electric vehicle. So, just like you fuel your car, a petrol and diesel car at a petrol station, there are charging stations available where you just plug your car uh, into the station and it will start charging. 
now that also has some advantages uh, you know the car can talk to the station saying that okay this is my id i am <coughs> from this and this area and uh, then you will be charged at a particular rate depending on the time uh, then if you are you are from particular let's say state then there are certain advantages that uh, uh, you get so again the connectivity comes into the picture so the car is now able to talk to the uh, the utility company distributor company and then accordingly you are being charged so that's a second example in the uh, we call it as a personal energy management <clears throat> the second aspect is in your home management where you want to make sure that uh, either your home or building is secure you are trying to put certain devices at home security devices so you are tracking uh, whether, whether there is any movement, there is uh, any problem, uh, or if there is a fire, you are immediately notified through a connectivity. The third thing is uh, the infotainment or entertainment that uh, we call. So the phones are becoming intelligent. You can do video conferencing calls at home. You can monitor or do the surveillance of your home through IP cameras. Again, that is possible by connecting those devices using variety of technologies, even including our set-top boxes, you can do a lot many such things today uh, uh, via internet. And the last example of the connected is, of course, the personal health care, where you want to monitor uh, health of your uh, you know, relatives or your parents. Uh, typically, you can see that there is a quite a bit of aging population, where you want to monitor uh, the health of uh, the uh, aging population and then you want to see whether my parents are safe uh, if there is any alert you want to send that even information to the net on the other hand currently there is no patient caregiver interaction on a day to day basis you only visit doctor you know once in a year or maybe uh, you know once in uh, you know two years uh, but what is needed today is that a continuous interaction continuous advice and also self-management. So the concept now coming is as a self-management and that is possible only if you can measure uh, you know, your health, track your health and can uh, you know, do some kind of social networking, connect with peers, see how they are uh, you know, doing health-wise and then share some thoughts and experiences. So that's the connected word uh, to give a background. Now what is a connected health? <coughs> So connected health is basically a model uh, for uh, you know healthcare de uh, delivery using a specific technology and uh, doing that healthcare remotely. So that's the definition of the connected health. Uh, so the idea is to use whatever readily available consumer components are there. Maybe it is your mobile phone or maybe uh, your existing you know measuring devices you have. You try to use that technology, leverage that technology, and then provide uh, the necessary care. The examples of uh, the connected health are, for example, a telehealth care, uh, where let's say you have a station uh, in a uh, remote location uh, where you have certain uh, measurement devices like uh, blood pressure or maybe heart rate monitor, where you connect that to a patient and then uh, a caregiver or a nurse in a remote center can diagnose uh, or you know interact with the patient remotely instead of having physically there. So that's the telehealth care. Uh, this is management. This is a generic term and uh, this is referred more for chronic diseases. Chronic disease means that uh, you know you are having the same problem for uh, over a period of time like a diabetes or it could be a hypertension and so on and so forth. So there is again a continuous monitoring requirement for such patients and uh, you cannot afford to visit doctors quite often or rather you want to you know uh, see that you can manage that on your own. So there, that, that, that's uh, you know disease management that we are talking about here. And lastly is the wellness and uh, lifestyle management. This is again a new trend coming up where you want to stay fit. Uh, you want to uh, you know make sure that the preventive measures are taken uh, well ahead of time. So that that's what we talk about wellness. So these are a few examples. And as you can see, is that. There are so many devices in the market. What are the business drivers? Why do, do we need connected health? Uh, you know, uh, uh, what is driving uh, this concept of connected health? Uh, one is basically, of course, you want to stay fit, uh, stay healthy. Uh, you know, uh, you want to prevent heart attacks. Uh, you want to have a stress-free life. 
so it is again driven by your need that okay i want to continuously measure uh, certain parameters and i want to take corrective act actions a uh, lot of people are also concerned about uh, diet they want to track how much calories they are burning or how much their calories they are earning so that's driven by self uh, second thing is the government regulation uh, uh, they they want to basically ensure that people are safe uh, and uh, also they are paid uh, when whenever there is a situation so the insurance companies also come into the picture they have a great concern that uh their costs are becoming high because if you see in the united states uh their you know uh, their expenses are mostly reimbursable okay so if people are not taking uh, you know care uh, well enough then the insurance company has to pay uh, for their care so insurance company wants to make sure that okay if doctor has subscribed uh, you know or prescribed something uh, to a patient whether that patient is really taking medications according to the prescription given by the doctor so that that is again the uh, you know driving factor another is the aging aging population uh, and the most interesting part now is that the uh, you know elderly people wants they want to live independently okay uh, they want to you know manage on their own however uh, we are worried i mean if we keep our parents uh, you know away then we are worried whether they are doing well uh, whether they are moving or you know uh, if there is anything wrong happening uh, so there is a continuous monitoring need for the aging people and the last is from the technology front that uh, you are seeing so many uh, uh, you know technologies evolving m to m stands for machine to machine that's the term that is being used uh, where to or more devices wants to connect with each other so it could be like a glucose meter or a heart rate monitor talking to a remote server or a mobile device remotely so that trend is also uh, you know increasing uh, you are getting uh, you know smaller footprint devices uh, you know high speed networks and enabling them so that is also promoting some of the uh, those things um, what are the challenges in the connected health uh, so one obviously is the cost of care so let's say i am a diabetic patient i need to visit the doctor to test my eyes on a regular basis because uh, diabetic patients are more prone uh, for the visibility problems so they would visit maybe every month to test the eye but that's not uh, you know uh, you know cost effective if he has to travel spend time that's not cost effective also if he has to visit the doctor uh you know there is a long waiting queue uh you need to pay you know fees on a regular basis so overall the cost of quality care is a concern uh so we have to basically see that how we can reduce cost what are the opportunities to reduce the cost uh in any in, in every treatment that we get or in any any disease that we manage uh the second challenge in providing this kind of a solution is that there are thousands of different types of devices even if i say that, that okay i have a glucose meter there are at least few hundred different companies manufacturing glucose meter and having different way of communicating uh, to a pc or a mobile phone or the internet so that's the second challenge that we need to address uh, also the number of users are quite high uh, the the amount of readings that you want to take earlier we we used to take uh, the readings maybe you know if there is something wrong now there is a need to proactively take your glucose measurement like uh, fasting pp we call uh, doctor recommend that you take those readings after every 3 months okay now the trend is even that you measure it every day or maybe uh, every every two hours depending on the situation so the amount of data that is you know pushed uh to the net is increasing that's the second challenge that we have to address uh if you look just google somewhere the you will see lot of links just look at uh, you know some of the links for example uh, you know on a, on your diet you will see you know hundreds of different links giving lot of information and all of them is confu confusing different regions different you know uh, personalities will tell different things about diet and uh, you know solutions so that's confusing so there is a need that we have a uh, information which is very personalized uh, which is very specific uh, to the disease that you are talking about and therefore uh, you know give a proper solution to the end user not to confuse the end user 
Other thing is that uh, you, if you want to carry some measurement device, it has to be a lightweight so small form factor. So whenever you design such a device, you have to see that okay, it is small, uh, it can work independently. So obviously, uh, the battery requirements needs uh, to be considered. The power consumption uh, things come into the picture, and I think this is uh, one of the you know things that come uh, to us whenever we interact with the customer. They will first ask, "What is your experience in terms of power management?" Show me examples how you have, uh, you know, uh, implemented a wearable device which can last for uh, more than 72 hours or 90 hours. So that's, I think, the skill uh, that you will have to, uh, you know, understand and see uh, how you design the system so that uh, there is a less power input. So the objective of uh, this solution, connected health solution, is basically you want to empower user. The user wants to take decision on his own. Uh, you want to reduce the cost of quality care, so see what are the opportunities uh, where you can reduce the cost of quality care. Uh, reduction in the medical errors, again how this can be achieved is basically you will have the consistent data available with you so that uh, the whenever uh, the doctor or physician is taking decision, he has some reference data or uh, the past notes available with him so that he can make appropriate decisions. Uh, and uh, then the increase the user engagement uh, in self management so typically people want to you know take medications for few days and forget about it uh, you run whatever programs you run whatever incentive programs they they would be successful only for first month so people will try out uh, they will get excited about new solution they will see okay this is a nice device okay let's use try it uh, but they will you know uh, you know get bored after you know, few days or few months. Even if it is an innovative solution, even if it is solving their problem, they will stop using it. So that's the uh, the thing that we want to overcome. So how we can increase the engagement, how we can keep motivating the user, uh, and the things that we uh, we are working on is like, for example, giving some incentive points uh, for taking medication on time. So that's the medication compliance problem that we are trying to solve. And then maybe redeem those points through gift coupons or uh, maybe some gifts even if it is just uh, you know uh, one dollar you know uh, people will wait uh, you know to get that one dollar and uh, you know uh, if you see that uh, you know uh, typically there are some some events where you get free ice creams and even if you have to wait for two hours people will wait for two hours but get that free ice cream so there is a lot of bit of psychology that we need to consider uh, and see how we can keep end user engaged into this particular program and obviously increasing the patient safety uh, whenever you want to implement this solution we have to make sure that uh, the solution is reliable and uh, the overall patient safety is considered whenever uh, you want to design this solution now why this is relevant to the domain so i will like to talk about few of the components that are typically involved in this particular solution so it all starts with let's say a person uh, with variable sensors, uh, so it could be a uh, you know a motion sensor or a uh, heart beat or it, it could be a uh, patch ECG patch. Nowadays you get ECG patch uh, you know which which is like a banded you just connect uh, to your arm and then it will start coming uh, recording uh, your ECG and then you can you know record that remotely. So there are several such sensors. They could be implantable or wearable. Implantable meaning that there are, uh, you know, for example, insulin delivery pumps. Uh, there are glucose chips uh, today uh, coming, uh, where they can continuously provide uh, the readings of the glucose, uh, you know, through invasive mechanisms. So there are these body-worn sensors, where it has got a lot of electronics involved in it. Uh, the second is the communication components. So once you have the measuring devices, now you have to think how effectively uh, I can send that information uh, to a remote location. So there are uh, access points or gateways that you need to design according to uh, the communication standards in that particular domain. So we call it as a uh, gateways. Obviously the other standard mechanisms like modems, telephones or even mobile phones, they come into the picture. And then you have the wireless access point or the access point which can send that data to the internet. 
Uh, then you have a component web server, it could be an embedded ser server or a normal web server and then the third party uh, you know, integration servers which will basically provide some additional service, services such as uh, uh, the incentive point engine or maybe uh, uh, the insurance and so on and so forth. And then you have to have a mechanism of accessing your data either through a mobile or a laptop. So this is a, a typical solution uh, that comes into the picture and user, as you can see there are variety of components where the electronics design is getting into the consideration. Uh, the example use case is that in your home there are multiple devices uh, such as uh, pulse oximeter, <coughs> device, uh, blood pressure curve uh, or maybe a pedometer. Uh, what does pedometer do is basically it tracks your steps. Uh, so it is typically if you know Nike has a shoe uh, where it has this pedometer which can tracks, uh, track number of steps you can also track how many distance you have traveled uh, and that is typically used for your fitness uh, uh, tracking. Then there could be devices like uh, the uh, you know, uh, environment control, uh, then there could be a fitness equipment in your home where you want to track how many calories you have burned and so on and so forth. And then uh, uh, things such as the medication uh, uh, compliance tracking and I have a device which I can show you uh, which uh, is recently developed by a company called as MedicPen. It's a very interesting device. So what does is has it has basically two cartridges. Uh, you can keep the medic, uh, you know, your tablets inside this particular, uh, uh, you know, there is a cartridge. Just like you have a printer cartridge, you can keep uh, the tablets, you know, inside this. There are uh, you know two different types of tablets you can keep. Uh, this device can communicate uh, to a laptop or a mobile device whereby you can uh, program it that okay I have to take two tablets and one I want to take uh, you know after uh, you know lunch or uh, maybe at two o'clock in the afternoon and one at the time. Uh, there is a small display here where you can see uh, some messages screens if there is a navigation here and uh, then you just forget about it. This device as far as you are carrying it with you. Uh, it will give you an indication, it will give you a beep and also a uh, light here and then uh, uh, if you press a button it will dispense the required medication. Okay. Once you dispense that it will record the time at which the uh, medicine was dispatched and then it will lock that uh, in this device whenever you connect to the net uh, either through PC or mobile phone, uh, it will record uh, your compliance to the medication. So this is basically the medication uh, you know, uh, tracking device. This still deserves a small footprint. This is not easy to carry, but this is just I think a first version uh, where uh, you know you can track your medication. So this is a medication tracking device. So what you do is basically collect, store information uh, in your end device, whatever measurements you have done, uh, or immediately transmit to the net. And then uh, there are multiple actions. Uh, you know that can happen. So, for example, one thing is that you know your overall trend, how much compliance you had achieved, and uh, if you are not taking medication as per your uh, you know prescri prescribed times, then the effectiveness of that medicine is gone. So, the doctors know or the care providers know uh, whether uh, you know it is because of you are not taking medication or it is because of something else. So, the care provider know, has all this information at his fingertip. Uh, similarly, if uh, you, uh, you are monitoring uh, the activity of your elderly people, if uh, there is a fall of a person, uh, then immediately it will send a signal to a, a central response system, uh, emergency response system and they can attend you or then uh, if you are a relative or caregiver, you know that what's happening, uh, whether uh, the parents are keeping in good health or not. So this is an example use case uh, that I wanted to discuss. And the connection could be either uh, wired or wireless connection. Now, what is the ecosystem? Who are the players uh, in this particular, uh, you know, connected health domain? So, one is the, of course, the semicon, uh, you know, semiconductor makers who are manufacturing, you know, chips uh, suited for medical use. For example, TI microchip. So, they are obviously there. They are providing a lot of variety of platforms, and I will share you some of the links uh, at the end of this session, and you can study that. Uh, but there are first of all the device makers. So if you have to make career, for example, uh, you can go to the device makers or the providers who basically design these kinds of solutions. 
uh, A and D Medical is the one who manufacture simple things like weighing scale, but it has got very good you know features. You can connect to uh, you know uh, through Wi-Fi net. They can give uh, free software also uh, where you can try uh, your weight. Cambridge Consultant is one who are desi designing innovative solutions in this. Again, providing uh, let's say a wearable sensor. So they have, for example, uh, prepared a device like a watch. And that that not only acts as a uh, you know activity monitor but also as a gateway. So if you are having some other devices uh, like a glucometer, uh, they can communicate to the net using that uh, wearable kind of a device. Uh, then uh, companies like Roche Diagnostics and Cypac. Uh, uh, Cypac is one interesting where uh, they are providing some you know uh, smart blister packs. And uh, again, the blister packs is another solution of medication tracking. So the blister pack itself has electronics. Whenever you dispatch a uh, you know tablet, uh, it will deactivate some circuit and then it will keep that uh, you know time and uh, then you have to just swipe that blister pack and then it, it will know all the data about uh, when you took the medication. So these are quite uh, innovative solutions. Second piece comes is basically a device connectivity. So there are many players, uh, you know, uh, either it could be Zigbee, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, who are making specific modules or chips uh, to enable these kinds of devices uh, to talk to either PC or internet. So one is the device interface. Now once you have the device interface, then you have to go to a, a high level, uh, you know, where it is a you know having a consumer portal or a health uh, management system. It could be an insurance provider or hospital management system. So there is a XHR interface, what we call it. It's uh, basically the personal health record interface. And uh, then correspondingly, uh, uh, the telematics or telehealth infrastructure that is required. So this is just to give uh, overall ecosystem what the players and where you can find your opportunities to work with. Uh, I want to just give a high level view of uh, what are the tools and technologies that we are using. Obviously, all the tools that were mentioned uh, in the morning sessions, uh, like ORCAD, PADS, uh, the standard PCB design tools, all those things are required. Uh, but there are some special things uh, or you know, you know, things that are used in the medical device, and I would like to share that. One is that uh, uh, you need to know about variety of sensors, they could be just activity monitoring sens sensors like motion, gyro. Uh, so we are using those kinds of sensors. Uh, we are also using some of the MEMS based sensor, I'm sure you have heard about this term. Uh, and we call it as BioMEMS, which is the uh, microelectromechanical sensors. They are becoming quite popular uh, nowadays. Uh, for example, a Gluco chip that I just mentioned has these kinds of MEMS sensors. Uh, then there could be other uh, non-invasive techniques such as the laser techniques. Uh, to, today you have to basically uh, you know, uh, uh, take a blood sample uh, to measure the glucose level. But there are now non-invasive techniques coming up such as the laser technology which do, does not require uh, uh, to take the blood sample. Then of course the analog to digital conversion chips, uh, communication standards used mainly in healthcare are Zigbee. Uh, again there is a specific uh, health profile in this protocols, Bluetooth, for example, Bluetooth health pro profile, uh, we use all the other standard technologies such as Wi-Fi, GSM, GPRS. The last one is quite interesting, so, and plus it's not known uh, to the industry today, and it is specifically designed for the wellness and you know fitness segment, uh, where, uh, for example, you may be uh, you know having a bike, uh, or you may be having a uh, you know in a, in a gym, for example, if you are uh, having a treadmill then most of those devices, uh, today you will see that they are working independently. I mean, you can see something on the screen, but they are not able to connect uh, to your mobile phone or laptop. So now there is a standard called as Ant Plus, which is enabling all those uh, uh, gym equipments to talk to the external world, uh, again, in the, you know, under the theme of connected world. Uh, so things such as you can measure the bike speed, for example, bike cadence, power, how much distance you traveled, uh, cal and then you can correspondingly determine how many calories you have burned. Uh, there is also a Garmin heart rate. Uh, I'm sure you have heard about Garmin, which can track your you know pulse, and you can get that pulse through this protocol called as Ant Plus. And this got you know introduced very recently. The advantage of Ant Plus is that it is a very low power, uh, very small footprint, and a very cost-effective uh, solution today in the market. 
uh, this and plus we have used in fact for a fitness monitoring dongle that we developed for iPhone. Uh, then the GPS, uh, you know, modules typically for tracking where you are. Uh, systems that are again becoming popular in this medical device domain are, of course, RTOS is common, but uh, embedded Linux and Android is also coming into the picture, especially wherever you want to have some human interaction like a touch panel display uh, or some more features, uh, then Android is preferred nowadays. And then, of course, the standard technologies like C and Python, typically we use it for testing or test automation. So these are the device side tools uh, as device being uh, you know, one subset of uh, the entire solution. On the server side, of course, uh, you need uh, technologies such as the web servers, uh, uh, then the messaging uh, systems. Many of the services are now cloud enabled. So whenever you want to do uh, a solution, you always think about a cloud based service so that you can uh, you know build customer as they use or as they transact your service so typically all the restful services or xml based services json is used open source technologies are quite often used typically in a startup companies where they want to have minimum investment so you need to have uh, those skills also and the other technologies like java specifically on the uh, on the website and uh, the UI components, as I said, that you want uh, more engagement with the customer. The site should say that, okay, you use me, not uh, throw me or forget about me. So a lot of interaction is required. A uh, lot of uh, you know interesting things need to be shown. Animation should be shown using things like Flash Flex. Uh, you need to have a very good content management system. So uh, gone are the days where you are just showing static pages. Now every day, uh, the provider wants to, uh, you know, sh show interesting information, uh, show news articles, and uh, uh, therefore you need a very good effective content management system, which can change the things, uh, you know, dynamically. And of course, the uh, cloud computing environments. Uh, other important aspect of uh, the medical device domain or the connected health domain is the regulatory aspect, uh, regulatory and standards. Uh, as far as the standards is concerned, there is a new standard that is coming up, which is IEEE 1107073, which is specifically for the device uh, to uh, the other components connectivity. Uh, so, for example, if I have a blood glucose monitor or I have a weighing scale, they have a profiles and they say that, okay, your device should communicate in certain way so that I can achieve interoperability. Okay, so it is more of a interoperability standard. So you need to know uh, these standards and continue alliance is one which is taking IFP 11073 as a basis and then driving the industry uh, to uh, you know make sure that their devices are interoperable and they provide certain guidance in terms of how that standard can be achieved. Then there is a Zigbee alliance, uh, Bluetooth uh, health profile is there that you need to know. Uh, HIPAA is one of the standard which is always stock whenever you are building a web system. So for example, you are always worried about the safety of your data. So if I am having my data, uh, I want to make sure that my data is safe, it is not uh, you know, shared with others. So there is a standard called as uh, uh, Health Information Portability Act and your software, hardware, whatever you develop needs to be compliant with this HIPAA and there are certain guidelines that are available on the net which you need to adhere when you are uh, you know designing a system again you have to do this when you are designing a new system you cannot do this after uh, your solution is done okay that's very late and uh, you will lose your market and then there are some standards for uh, sharing the information with the uh, insurance providers or healthcare information systems uh, servers and that is called as ASC X12 uh, and uh, there are some standard based out of that like H87 uh, which you need to be aware of. So this gives you an overall uh, background about uh, you know what are the different tools, technology standards uh, that you need to uh, you know learn and that we are currently using. Uh, embedded tools, so far again as I said whatever tools that you are using, uh, typically what happens is that whenever we design a solution we generally you know have these tools from uh, you know TI or microchip they provide uh, these tools so we use whatever standard tools are uh, there, nothing specific. Uh, C is 
typically a standard, uh, you know, with having an embedded flavor assembly, uh, you know about it. You need a lot of debuggers, emulators, uh, because if you do not have a user interface, like for example, even if you have a user interface, it's very hard to debug such kind of a you know device. So you need some kind of external interfaces, emulators to simulate the behavior. If you are using a lot of uh, wireless technologies, uh, you need some special uh, hardware uh, to validate uh, whether your wireless technology is working properly and uh, national instruments uh, lab you along with their IO cards provide a great platform for you to uh, do those kinds of testing. So one instance I can share you is that uh, we were developing a wearable sensor and uh, typically uh, you need to uh, see that even if uh, you are let's say getting a module, uh, let's say a ZigBee module uh, from the external world, it is supposed to uh, you know communicate, communicate on 2.4 gigahertz. It may not give uh, a good response or a distance uh, when you just plug it into it and you need to basically customize some registers uh, to see that it gives a maximum range okay, during production. Uh, so what we did is we prepared a test jig uh, where we use this national uh, instruments uh, hardware and then uh, we kind of measured the uh, you know strength of the signal uh, using uh, national uh, instruments tool and then uh, whenever there was a need that okay this particular component is not giving good signal we would adjust the register so that uh, uh, it will give a maximum strength. So, you need to also come up with innovative ideas about minimizing the component failures or minimizing the you know production loss. So you need to come up with not a lot of good such ideas and use them. Uh, after this, I would like to share a couple of uh, examples that we built at Symphony. Uh, as I was mentioning about the Ant Plus protocol, uh, so if you can see, uh, this is a dongle actually which connects uh, to the uh, iPhone. Okay, so this is a 30 pin connector uh, which connects the iPhone. Uh, and uh, the challenge was that again, uh, there are many fitness devices in gym uh, that are now antlers enabled. Uh, and it is a low power uh, communication protocol. And uh, many of you know that iPhone is having the largest consumption. Uh, in the world. So, we wanted to have a device which will connect to iPhone. Now, iPhone has got its own challenges. You cannot just design a you know, device and connect it to it like by, like you connect to a PC, for example, on RS232 port or a USB port. Uh, iPhone won't allow you it to do that or Apple won't allow you to do that. There is a specific accessory protocol, what we call, you have to follow, you have to get some certification from Apple, then only you can do that. So, that's the second challenge. And uh, the third, uh, the most important challenge was that we have given a hard deadline that uh, the customer wanted to launch that before Christmas because that's the time where consumer, you know, buy things, try things, they have some time, so <coughs> they want to spend, you know, money on uh, this product, that's where you expect maximum sales. So there was a hard deadline for doing that. So we basically, uh, you know, designed uh, this dongle, we did the industrial design. So. I am just giving examples so that you know what are the steps involved in uh, launching a product. So first step is obviously you design uh, the module uh, and you understand what are the interfaces available with iPhone. Correspondingly you select the appropriate uh, you know processor. Uh, so that hardware design was done. Then we also did the industrial design, uh, then form factor, uh, the material selection. Uh, obviously it has to match with the quality of the iPhone. And then we basically implemented uh, this dongle uh, application. Uh, and then we tested uh, it uh, with a, again a test model uh, available from Ant Plus, which allowed us to simulate certain profiles like the bike speed, cadence, uh, and uh, heart rate, and so on and so forth. So then after that, uh, there is something called as a uh, over the air test. And this is very important whenever you are connecting a wireless device to a mobile device. So, in short, it is called as OTA and what does it do is that it makes sure that it doesn't uh, hamper the performance of your normal phone. So, if you are connecting another wireless device, they make sure that the normal functionality of your phone, uh, whether you are receiving a call or, you know, calling, it doesn't get affected. So, you have to pass that certification. Second thing is that I have, uh, the Apple themselves have got some uh, you know, certification labs, so 
before you put your product into market, uh, they certify whether uh, this product will work or not. So you have to integrate an authentication chip inside your product which will allow you to connect it to iPhone and then that is verified by uh, Apple that uh, whether that is really working in that manner. <coughs> so you have to pass through that criteria. So we passed through that criteria and it took uh, almost six months for uh, this product uh, to reach that particular stage uh, and fortunately we were able to demonstrate that in a show uh, during this uh, Christmas time. Uh, so finally, the technologies used were like PI, MSP430. This is just to give you an example, like what are the technologies currently used and uh, uh, you know how the product is built. Uh, the other one is the uh, Apple authentication protocol. Uh, you have to have a low power CP design and plus module and uh, you know standard C and assembly language for whatever you know interfacing that we did and the communication we did. Uh, the next one is uh, quite interesting uh, thing that we did and uh, as I was mentioning, uh, the elderly people want to live independently. There is a huge population and uh, uh, typically in the United States, uh, you know, uh, they, they want to live independently, they want to, you know, do their activities on on own and there is nobody, you know, uh, to look after them every now and then. So there was a strong need that you monitor uh, the activity, whether the elderly person is walking running or uh, you know uh, you know stepping up and so and so forth or sleeping if it is uh, you know sleeping then also you need to know how much you know uh, time uh, the elderly person is sleeping uh, so what we did is uh, we basically uh, developed a variable sensor i will also show you that sensor so uh, this is the form factor of that sensor which you can either keep it in your pocket or your belt uh, just like your mobile phone as you can see, this is a very small footprint uh, uh, and uh, light, light in width. Uh, we have even smaller uh, you know, footprint and uh, we call it as a pendant device which you can really wear as an ornament uh, uh, in your necklace. So that's the next version that is coming out uh, in a couple of months that we have designed. So what it does is basically uh, it has a motion you know, detection sensor or you know, uh, accelerometer inside that. Uh, it also has a Zigbee uh, communication, uh, you know, module inside it, and plus uh, the standard, uh, you know, RTOS there. It basically uh, detects the motion. It has a, uh, a, an algorithm uh, which analyzes the patterns and it decides whether a person person has fallen or not. And uh, this may look very simple, but it's not simple. There are many uh, cases, and what we call as, uh, uh, you know. False fault detection or you know uh, true fault detection. So it is possible that I am just jumping uh, you know up and down, and uh, some algorithm may say that okay it has fallen down, but that's a false false fault detection. There could be some true cases where you have really fallen down, but uh, you are not able to do that. So there are many such patterns that you need to do that, and everything is now built into this sensor. Uh, so what it does is that uh, it collects that information. You have a home gateway as uh, it is shown in this picture. So this is a gateway device uh, which is then connected your to your normal phone line or it has a GSM GPRS uh, you know uh, connectivity. Uh, it also has a uh, battery inside this and it can last for 72 hours. So we, when we designed the algorithm, we had to also make sure that it doesn't consume a lot of. Uh, you know battery power so that's the another aspect of this design that we took into the consideration you will see that there are two uh, such uh, mini sensors mounted on this so typically you have uh, you know husband and wife uh, inside so you need two such mini sensor and uh, it is acting as a charging station also so apart from the communication it is also charging this so there is a connector here uh, so which allows you to charge this so chargeable feature is also inside this so once you detect this, uh, then it transmits through Zigbee to the gateway. Uh, the gateway will in turn send to an emergency response system or maybe uh, your friend uh, who is worried about your health, about uh, you know what are you doing. In case there is an emergency, then immediately uh, the emergency response center will send an ambulance to see uh, if there is something wrong happening at your house to you know see uh, whether everything is all right. So we built that entire system and. Uh, 
uh, apart from this solution, you also need to get uh, the carriers or the telecom companies also involved. So, uh, uh, the company for whom we develop, actually we are a services company, we are not a product company. So, we developed it for a company uh, who is tying up with some telecom operator companies to promote this and then uh, maintain this. So, this is one case uh, where we have used variety of uh, the technologies such as uh, GSM, GPRS, GP and uh, the other op option is also that we can also talk to a mobile phone or Bluetooth. So that's uh, another version that uh, uh, we have built uh, for this company. Uh, okay, so that's about few examples. Uh, I have a few other examples also uh, uh, that I will show. So this is another device actually, uh, which you can plug into your normal uh, uh, plug. And again, it has got some light, so in case you forget to take a medication, it knows what is the right time, so it will beep. Uh, and it has got a corresponding gateway also, so if there is any, again, uh, you know, thing that you want to communicate back and forth between the net, there is a gateway device again, uh, which talks on a Zigbee uh, with this device. This can also talk on a GP, GSM, GPRS uh, to the internet and then uh, track your health or remind you uh, also. Uh, in some devices, you also have, have a voice capability. So, for example, if you send a text message, it will correspondingly convert that text message to the voice and then you will, the end user will be alerted and advised with appropriate uh, action to take. Uh, so, I think in the morning, uh, we got very good insights uh, from Uday and Mahesh in terms of how to make career. Uh, fundamentally, uh, as uh, Sir said, I mean, uh, you have to have a very good strong fundamental uh, that is not going to go away. You need to have a very good fundamental about the electronics, whatever syllabus uh, you have been taught. Uh, at a high level, what I would like to summarize is, uh, is that uh, uh, this is a multidisciplinary uh, you know, subject. You need to know about not only electronics, but little bit about uh, mathematics, uh, then maybe mechanical, uh, if there is a, you know, sensing technologies involved, uh, you know, uh, chemicals involved, you need to need, know a little bit about that. So, you need to have that attitude uh, to be a multidisciplinary person. Second thing is that you also need a entrepreneurial, uh, uh, entrepreneurial attitude uh, nowadays because gone are the days where you will be told to do something and you will do it. Now, you have to take the leadership, you have to basically come up with new ideas, uh, to the solution. Uh, you may be doing, uh, let's say, engineering now, uh, but there are also quite a bit of research opportunities in this area. So, you should also look out for uh, doing some research uh, and uh, also think globally. Don't just look locally, but also think globally. I am saying that if I go out in the market, uh, you know, there are very good universities. Uh, you will see that most of the people you know, outside working uh, in United States, they are most of them are like uh, PhD students, and uh, that kind of a research, you know, allow you to be independent. You can, you know, solve many problems independently and become entrepreneur. You can have your own startups. Uh, it's not only United States, but I can see that also happening in Pune. There are many startups for developing a lot of innovative solutions. Uh, so, apart from just having a service, I think you should also think about whether you can become an entrepreneur, whether you can have your own products or solutions. That, that, that mindset has to be there. Even if you, you know, join a company, that's, that's okay, but you need an entrepreneurial attitude even with, with, whether you are working for a company. Uh, so that's, that's the high level, uh, you know, thought that I would like to share with you. Having said that, uh, coming down to uh, uh, the ground to that, what you need uh, is basically you need definitely some of the skills like the uh, OS less platforms, RTOS platforms or maybe OS platforms, typically Linux, uh, no, Android is the trend right now. Uh, you also need some medical instrumentation background and also interest in the medical interest, uh, you know, instrumentation background. So, how the sensors work, what are the different kinds of sensors, uh, you know, you need to know a little bit knowledge about that. Now, obviously, languages, uh, mobile phones are you know, getting used in a day to day, uh, so you need to know about the mobile platforms also. Uh, right now, uh, there is a lot of trend that uh, you basically, uh, you know, form these measuring devices as part of your mobile.
mobile phone. So you have a very good opportunity to turn a mobile phone into a healthcare or health management device. So you should also think uh, about using these mobile platforms, enhancing the, uh, those platforms uh, into making uh, a health device. Of course, the other technologies such as wireless technologies, uh, the mathematical algorithm development approach, like I mentioned, in this uh, you, you need to do a lot of uh, you know pattern recognition and processing algorithms. You need to have that computational uh, you know attitude also. And lastly, the regulatory knowledge. You need to also know uh, the uh, use of what is the intended use of my device and whether it is safe. Whether uh, because uh, without which the customer, uh, you know, or the patient may die or have some severe impact. You need to understand uh, the impact uh, because of the wrong use or because of misbehavior of the device. So you need to understand what are the standards, regulatory compliance. Because whenever you want to sell such devices, uh, typically in any new markets, uh, United States, you need to get some FDA approvals, and it, you need to know what are uh, the classification of the devices and uh, in which category your device falls. Whether you really need so many regulations. So that background, I think, uh, you need to know about. And by the way, all this information is available uh, on the net. Ample of information is available. You don't need to, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, have any, uh, you know, lessons for that. Uh, then I will have to share some of the links from where you can get started. For example, TI has a very good guide uh, for the uh, medical, uh, you know, devices. Uh, so there is a portal and PDF. Uh, on uh, focus.ti.com uh, where you can see a catalog of products who are specifically you know for medical domain so you will learn a lot of technologies uh, uh, you know that are coming up with different features it's a good start another magazine online magazine is eetimes.com uh, every day or every week they have got tutorials webinars uh, and uh, some of them are very focused on the connected health uh, so I urge you to basically subscribe to that and then uh, learn quite a bit of that. Uh, then there are certain organizations which give you a broad picture of the connected health, different programs run by the government organization where you can see a lot of opportunities, uh, where you can also participate in solving the problems. And uh, then as far as the medical device is concerned, there is again uh, another site medicalelectronicsdesign.com uh, where you also see a lot of innovations that is happening in this field and uh, maybe learn from that. Okay, uh, any questions uh, so far? So instead of iPhone 7, uh, Android is the best of the whole channel. Yes, yes. Yeah, you can. We are what I talk about and iPhone will be the best of the whole channel. Right. Yeah, we can also design that for us. So there is a definitely opportunity uh, for us to develop uh, that kind of a dongle for uh, Android as well. But there are many people who are better programming Java. Uh, yes, and whatever uh, you know, language. Generally, they provide the libraries, uh, low-level libraries, uh, the native libraries for communication. We can make use of that and uh, do that. Uh, this dongle is specifically for iPhone because uh, it requires some authentication. Uh, so there is uh, the firmware on the dongle side is very specific, uh, but it can be very well, uh, uh, you know, designed for Android as well. No issues. Yes. The Not that I have heard of, but uh, I'm sure that uh, there is some uh, you know simulator which can you know stimulate uh, certain signals in the into the brain. I'm sure that uh, there is one. Uh, yeah, that's quite possible. But if it is not, I think again look at as an opportunity and think how it can be implemented. Definitely, yeah. Uh, there are many interesting devices uh, like, for example, monitoring your sleep also. So what people have done is they have monitored your certain brain waves and uh, there is a particular pattern, okay, that uh, uh, 20 minute cycle is there that you are alert uh, in, uh, you know, some period of that 20 minute and uh, typically what happens is that you have an alarm clock 
and uh, generally if that alarm happens at the wrong time you have a little bit of headache i mean you don't want to get up uh, kind of a thing but what they have done is that uh, they basically you all they are allowed uh, you, you basically set a alarm clock they monitor your pattern this 20 meter uh, minute pattern and uh, within that 20 minute they know that okay this is the period when uh, your brain is active and uh, if you wake up that person then he will feel fresh so that device will basically you know give an alarm in that band only when you are likely to be alert and that's uh, you know working out very good I and mean, uh, that is wake me up kind of a device it's quite interesting so there are many such interesting you know things uh, happening in this uh, connected world uh, i would urge that you do some uh, you know search uh, on that i will also share other uh, you know examples at the end probably that we develop apart from this Do you think there is a limited awareness about medical instrumentation? Uh, fortunately, uh, in uh, uh, in Pune, there is a very good, uh, you know, I think, course in COIP, uh, biomedical instrumentation. Uh, even if uh, you don't, uh, you know, have that course, there is a very good book uh, uh, on medical instrumentation. I think you can have a look at it. And uh, as an electronic person. i think you will understand it very easily I and mean, you can do a self learning also uh, but uh, i think in pune there are quite a bit of uh, courses already there in biomedical instrumentation uh, so cvp i i definitely know that there is one uh, there okay any any other question yes hello yeah So can the electricity be generated, or means the power can be generated from the pulses of a person? I believe that there is some uh, research uh, still going on. It's not uh, still yet like uh, using uh, the vibrations. Uh, okay, uh, so low power, uh, you know, it's but but it's very low power. I would say to keep your remote sensor alive. So for example, uh, if you are having a uh, you know a temperature sensor on your uh, body. or maybe in a machine uh, so what they do is basically using the uh, you know vibrations they generate some signals and keep charging the unit sufficient enough to transmit the temperature to the external world so i know that but i'm not sure about the in the healthcare domain but i'm sure that there is some research already there so because there are pulses actuated uh, watches this watches right so, yeah but that requires quite less power so can more power be amplified or generated from it yeah i think certainly uh, there is a possibility uh, of doing that uh, but i think we also need to look at the application it also also need uh, you know uh, we need to look at what application that you have in, you have in mind because in certain cases uh, you know developing a new technology may be expensive where you can have a small button cell which can last for seven days and that may be sufficient to solve your problem so we need to look at what problem we want to address in which format the brain I means the signals of the brain uh, brain are generated as you said uh, it means the signal of the brain are mapped right yes. so in which format it is is it the current voltage what is uh, yeah that's a good question ultimately it has to be a current or voltage but uh, the sensing technology I, i will just get back to you on that let me just uh, be honest on that so uh, i don't really uh, really uh, you know uh, but there are certain waves which you basically uh, you know there is a transmitter and receiver uh, who basically track uh, the activities inside the brain uh, but ultimately of course it has to be a, a current some kind of current but the actual sensor i will let you know i don't recollect exactly can yes. it, uh, can it be it is possible to create artificial organs like heart uh, by machine yes it is possible uh, kidney because if a person don't uh, fails both the kidney then he has to weekly go to the hospital and uh, that for dialysis uh, yeah so uh, how yeah i i'm not sure about kidney but heart uh, valves i definitely know they have uh, developed a artificial heart valve uh, i'm not sure about kidney but on the whole front uh, they have definitely made very good progress uh, in terms of uh, making a artificial heart means um, what would what would be the power source for that no you have to rely on the external power uh, uh, 
because uh, you cannot every now and then charge it or replace uh, the battery. So generally, what happens is that there is an external, uh, you know, device uh, or, or a battery kind of a device uh, where you can basically uh, connect that to uh, the mecha mechanics of uh, your wall. Uh, so that's how it is generally done. It, it is generally done in two parts: one which resides inside, and one which is external uh, on your body. And then whatever maintenance is required, you do outside your body so that you don't have to open uh, every time. I mean, let's skip the question answer session for the panel discussion. Okay, we are getting late for panel. If you can just quickly. Sure. Okay. Sorry, we'll have maybe offline discussion because <coughs> there are a lot of interesting things uh, that <laughs> are, we can talk endlessly. So I will just uh, just spend few minutes about uh, Symphony. So basically, we are a product uh, innovation company. And uh, we have developed many, uh, I, I will call it as a version 1.0 products. So uh, innovative products that go into the market, either software or hardware. Uh, and uh, we have been positioned as a leader as per the Gartner's uh, Magic Quadrant. Uh, we are also Microsoft's uh, exclusive certification partner for their uh, server uh, cloud-based you know, uh, applications. Uh, we are Amazon's web uh, solution partner as well uh, and then Zina uh, has been naming us as the number one uh, in our OPD space uh, and recently we have launched a concept called as enterprise mobility uh, whereby nowadays you want to you know do everything on your mobile all your workflows office applications so uh, we are doing quite a bit in that particular area uh, we work with uh, lot of software independent vendors, uh, independent software vendors who basically have their own products or maybe hardware uh, vendors who have their own products. Uh, as I said initially, we are a services company. We don't build products for on our own, but we develop products for our companies. And we also have a telecom uh, and networking division where we do a lot of uh, telecom management products. Uh, what we do is basically the end-to-end -end product, so right from the concept, uh, design, industry design, uh, PCB design, uh, enclosures, and few prototype pieces, we do it end-to-end. -end. And a few of our customers, like uh, in the healthcare domain specifically, are uh, Nicholas Piramal. Uh, we have been also working with Philips, Pfizer, uh, Velcor is one of our customers, and many other startup companies, we are there in the uh, market. Uh, we are also working with uh, British Telecom, AT&T. Microsoft, as I just mentioned. Uh, few of the other examples uh, in the connected health, uh, assisted living, we talked about that. It is also called as a personal emergency response system first. Uh, other inter interesting application that we did was a vitals monitoring. So typically in, uh, uh, not in India, but in uh, United uh, Kingdom, there is a lot of crunch of the ICU. and. Uh, uh, even if there is an emergency situation, you don't have a room in ICU. So what we did is we prepared a PDA-based solution whereby you can monitor certain parameters and calculate a score and based on that score, you will know whether that patient can be moved out of uh, ICU or maybe from general ward to ICU, thereby making more uh, you know, things available uh, in the hospital. Uh, we have also built a telehealth care solution where uh, remotely you can monitor uh, the blood glucose level as well as the insulin delivery, delivery through insulin pump. So typically there are uh, insulin pumps that you can wear and it can deliver certain amount of insulin in your body depending on the dosage that is recommended by the user. So we did a remote monitoring system whereby the nurses can monitor uh, general health and then advise whether you need to increase the insulin dose or not. And then uh, you can correspondingly also avoid uh, visits uh, to the hospital. Uh, fitness monitoring we talked about. Uh, we have also built other medical devices like uh, breath analyzer device for neonatal, uh, HbA1c measurement device. Uh, also some of the wellness portals. So not only uh, the health related, but how you can you know uh, uh, you know prevent. Uh, certain diseases, so putting some information and uh, things like that. And finally, uh, the enterprise mobility, including the hospital setup, where you want to increase the uh, you know effectiveness of the staff in a hospital setup. So I think uh, that's all. Uh, I would like to thank everybody uh, for patiently listening, and uh, so thank Oasis for giving us opportunity to uh, present uh, this connected concept. Thanks.